in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the KD Ratio. It's your designated podcast for all things nerd. My name is Kyle, and with me tonight I have... Billy and Dylan. Oh, thanks, Billy. That was a great intro. I'm glad you went second, Billy. That was good. (laughs) That was good. Billy is uh, not here right now. He'll be back in just a few moments. Uh, We decided to start recording right now because we're so eager to get this news out. Wow, you make it sound like we're going to have a really big announcement to make or something. No big announcement. We just got Same it. as always. <laughs> yeah. We're going to bullshit for the next hour and have fun with it. Let's open up with... Uh, I want to make sure Billy's involved in the, the topic because he specifically went out of his way to watch Black Panther, which we'll be talking about later. But before we get into that, let's open up with what Dylan's excited about. Yes. God of War Ragnarok released... I have finished it and ready to give my full review. Um, it is a great successor to God of War 2018. And it is on par with Elden Ring. They're both great games. Um, I, I don't feel right comparing it to Elden Ring because they're kind of different experiences. But it is definitely a high caliber game that, you know, is firing on all cylinders i mean the story is amazing combat feels good um the world is huge the amount of content in the game is mind-boggling for a story game i got to a point where where i felt like i was doing story missions and i was like i have to be getting near the end but i still felt like i was so early in the experience and i was still so early so the the length of the game is so large, but that's not it's not too large, you know, like a bad thing. It's all good it's content. Just right. Yeah. It's not like it's stretched out and there's like it's boring. It's all st- it's stretched out but with good content across all of it. If you like took what you just said out of context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a whole lot of potential euphemisms it's happening stretched there. <laughs> But I, I mean, I would probably have to give it, you know, like a as close to a ten out of ten as I can. Um, if you were to give it on a, a rating of a hundred, hundred, ooh, I okay, hmm, I feel bad to give it a hundred out of hundred. I'm trying to think what what was what wasn't good. No Mjolnir. No Mjolnir, Mjolnir. but I understand it, and I feel like that's. I give it respect for that because I I feel like if it didn't explain it well, I would have been more salty, but I'm okay with why we didn't get it. So, yeah, I guess that'd be a detractor. And then (sighs) having to wait four years for the next game, (laughs) (laughs) huge detractor. I'm going to have to take points off because yeah. they don't have the next one built already. <laughs> and they made. should. <laughs> um, so I would, I would, I'd say 98. Um, and even that's really hard to think of stuff that's, that's wrong with the game. So it's just, it's a God tier game. Fits the name God of War. <laughs> if you're into that kind of game. Yes. Uh, the adventure, the, you know, the Norse mythology, um <clears throat> then it's about as perfect as it can be. Yes, I mean the facial animations I want to give them major props for. There's multiple scenes with Kratos alone. I feel like him and probably Freya are the two that you most see it in. Maybe the dwarves too, Brock and Sindri, but Kratos especially they have these little facial animations that are so small but they're so well implemented, like in the beginning, um, you know, uh, Kratos and Atreus, this isn't really a spoiler, but they're, they just got back from hunting and um, Atreus like already did something that Kratos usually had to tell him to do or Kratos was going to do himself. And the camera just holds on his face and you see this like he looks proud 
and but it's it's like such a small detail but looks amazing and i love the facial animations in this game there's something to be said for the just what technology has achieved in gaming in the last couple of years um not even the last couple of years but like if you look at god of war 2018 mm-hmm. which by no means looked bad in any way it, it still holds up but how far they've come even from that game to this one it's crazy yeah like and i mean that i know i saw a lot of comments before the game out came out saying it was just a dlc for god of war 2018 and no i don't it's it's its whole experience of course it's a sequel so it's going to be the same like a continuation of god of war 2018 it's not like a reinventing um but i think it it stands on its own and uh definitely not just a cheap dlc yeah the only reason people would say that is they're haters yes (laughs) (laughs) i mean uh let's be real here so what was uh what was what surprised you most story-wise story-wise are we going spoilers all right, let's spoiler alert okay. it right now and just go all in. This is your moment to skip ahead. You know, we're going to talk spoilers. Um, most ex- surprising moment for me, I mean, I did not see Tyr being Odin. That <laughs> that struck me. I, I didn't trust him, but I was like, no, I guess he can't be Odin. I don't know. And then, boom, he was Odin. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then Brock dying. Yeah. And Brock being the one to figure it out. That was such a good scene because I was like, what, you know, what's Brock's problem? And then I finally get it. I was like, wait, Brock has a point. Like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> like, he's like, what the fuck you on about? And then, um, honestly, another big surprise, liking Thor. I thought Thor was going to be a huge ass and, you know, be like a very bad, bad guy. No, they made him like almost, um, he was supposed to, I think, mirror Kratos yeah in like somebody who did bad in his past and he feels bad about it and he and he is battling with it letting him you know determine his life and so i was surprised with that i i like thor and i did, i was sad he died i wanted to see him continue to be on but i uh what about you i'm bummed out about because i'm the same way i loved their interpretation of thor um, I loved every scene he was in, and I was, I was pretty bummed out when, uh, when he was taken out of the, out of the game. Yep. Uh, by Odin, his by own Odin. dad. And it, it almost feels like all of God of War, even back to you know Kratos's Greek days, it's like bad parents. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like dad issues. It's all it's all about <laughs> trying to break the cycle. <laughs> Except for God of War One, maybe. That, yeah, I guess that was all about Ares. Ares. Yeah, but even then, that was all really kind of set up by Zeus. Yeah, true. You know. So yeah, it's all it's all parent issues. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that's really dumbing it down. I mean, it is written and done beautifully, and so complex now. If you would have told, like, you know back in god of war one through three if you would have went back in time and told them hey there's going to be some really great games that delve into kratos redeeming himself and actually feeling bad about what he did <laughs> yeah. they'd be like bullshit like no not Kratos." Yeah. but it i it's sold i'm sold on it and i fully bought into kratos i enjoy his character arc so much <laughs> like he's become such a good person now Back when Kratos used to just scream, yeah, all the time, Zeus, <laughs> I have come for you. <laughs> and I, I really like. I was glad they did a time skip, um, yeah. because of how they develop some of the relationships. Mm-hmm. So, like, my favorite has to be Mimir and Kratos. Mimir yeah. became like almost like his house wife, <laughs> <laughs> and like I find it hilarious that they talk about like raising a atreus and like there's a special dialogue after the game where kratos asks mimir if they prepared him for like love and it's like they're both his parents yeah and then oh when kratos calls mimir brother yeah that warmed my heart i was like one of my favorite little i mean there's a lot of good just random Mm -hmm. almost like throwaway lines 
but I love the one when um, he's asking uh, Kratos, like, when am I going to have muscles like you? He's like, when you work for them. (laughs) (laughs) Just like, he's like, yeah, but, you know, Balder was strong and he didn't have muscles. And he's like, my muscles do not determine my strength, but both are honed by discipline. (laughs) And then Mimir's like, when you start picking up stuff and throwing it, you'll get bigger muscles. Like, the, <laughs> like Aye, laddie. <laughs> like, it's just, um, I don't know, just little things like that. There's so good, there's such good character interactions in the game. Like, all that stuff you mentioned. I'm sad. So, at the end of the game, um, I'm going back into spoilers for a second. At the end of the game, Atreus goes off on his own, and you're, you have Freya. I love Freya, but I'm also sad that... I know I missed out on a ton of conversations with both Freya and Atreus because you can take them on side missions that you'll hear one perspective versus the other. And like, I was really glad um, when you're in Alfheim, I think that where the elves are, you can free the jellyfish. Did you see that mission? Did I did not the no, I didn't see that. So you, I did it with Atreus. You can go back and do it later with Freya. But if you do it with Atreus, Um, At the point in the story where it takes place, Atreus is like, you know, he's like, you know, why did you do this? Um, You know, you didn't have to do this for me. And Kratos is like, I didn't do it for you. And it's this beautiful, it's a really touching moment because they, they talk back and forth and Atreus can't understand why Kratos would do this side mission or why he would care about this. And then Mimir chimes in and says, did you ever consider that he just wanted to spend time with you? And it's like, (laughs) <laughs> oh my god uh. <laughs> especially because the whole game um there's pro it's about prophecy and accepting fate and or not accepting fate sorry and um they both believe at this point that kratos is fated to die and so it's even more touching when they, it comes from that perspective of kratos one you know i mean as the player you're not kratos being wanting to spend time with his son but they present it as kratos he might die, so of course he wants to spend what time they have available with Atreus. Yeah. So what what do you think about um, the ending? Do you think what do you think the future of God of War? Because I'm I'm I I wouldn't mind seeing a spinoff. I maybe that's not for everybody, but Atreus. I think it'd be kind of cool to see yeah. the, uh, the game developed around him the- and. What whatever he plans to do next, you know. I would. I'm totally down for his own game. Um, the part that I'm struggling with is I know a lot of people, and myself included. I don't. While I would love this to be the end of Kratos' story, I don't want it to be. But I don't know how you would keep going. Keep going without ruining his character, because right. they made a huge development in like he doesn't want war anymore unless it's necessary because he knows the the cost and so i'm okay i'm okay with him retiring and i would love to see them explore different gods next like atreus atreus like goes to egypt egypt that would be you know some people are even talking about like you know like aztec gods like you know there's so many different ways that you can go with that maybe I get why they'd be like, oh, they can't call it God of War anymore because Atreus isn't yeah. <laughs> God of War. You know, be but, called like Loki. Yeah, you can call it something else. Atreus. And it could still be in the same vein. It's like yeah. uh, well, the Miles, Rocky movies. You know, it's called Creed now. It has Miles nothing to do Morales. with Rocky. <laughs> Miles Morales. You it's know, like, a completely separate game that'll probably play similar, but it's a different character. And I mean, if they have that same same design concept like spider-man does with god of war i'd be down 100 percent. yeah so i i mean i like the way it's going i wouldn't be opposed to a spinoff series starting um and if they end kratos's story here um that's fine with me do you think they will i think money talks yes (laughs) and that's that's the only thing you know i the, the nothing's ever truly dead I think that at this point, it might be po- more plausible for them to just restart it all together again. <laughs> but they'll probably release a, a remake of the original or something. Yeah. Because that seems to be what's popular nowadays. It'll be, it'll definitely be tough. But, you know, I mean, I fully, 
I my faith is in Sony Santa Monica. They showed their talents with the writing. So if anyone can pull it off, I think they would be able to. Yeah. I'll be interested to see yeah. where it goes. For sure. But yeah, so I guess uh in conclusion, if you if you have a it's on PS4 also, right? Yeah. If you have PS4 or PS5, um, you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing either of them. Yeah. I mean I would recommend playing the first 2018 God of War if you haven't playing that one first, but this is a must if you're a PlayStation fan. And they do have a recap um, for people who haven't played God of War 2018 in a few years. Um, If you want to use that, it helps catch you up. I didn't watch it because I played it a few months before this came out. Yeah, I I recently played God of War 2018 just to refresh in my memory. It's still a good game. It still holds up. Yeah. It's not that old, I guess. Yeah. But it even if that game twenty God of War twenty eighteen, if that were to be released this year, um, it would still be game of the year discussion worthy. Yeah. <laughs> like um really, really good stuff for sure. Well, so get out there, buy it. That's my recommendation. And with that, we'll move on to the but next first, topic. Buy a PS5. No, you can put you can play it on PS4. PS4. Well, if I'm you're just a, joking, like PlayStation, you have to buy a PlayStation. Way, way to ruin the joke, way, Dylan. That was funny moment. <laughs> Did you just recommend this game on PS4? Yeah. If you it don't plays. have, it's only fair because it's still damn near impossible <laughs> to get a PS5. <laughs> have you seen any content from uh, from it being on the PlayStation 4 platform? Like, the, I, like visually, I still... I looked it up and they did like a direct comparison and. It's, I mean, yes, you can tell the difference, but it's not like... Because that's it, just amazing. Because It like, basically looks like how God of War 2018 did. Because mm-hmm. that was PS4 only. Because the original PlayStation 4 came out when? 2014? 2014? 13? 13, 13 14? Uh, like, that's a long time ago to be able to yeah. still... I'm sure it there's a wide like a, range It of sounds like hardware. an airplane. Yeah, jet <laughs> engine taking off when you're playing God of War. <laughs> God, I remember... Um, I was on PS4 up until recently. It took me a while to get PS5, and we'd be playing like Warzone or something, and it would be so loud <laughs> that like I would have to step away to hear. Sometimes hear you guys talk. <laughs> it was it was absurd. So yeah, God of War. You guys have liked it. Obviously, you got we picked it for our game of the year. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, one of us was not too happy with how it got picked. But <laughs> that would be me. But I think it was fair. Yeah. Yeah. It Check was, out the live stream on YouTube. It was just there was, uh, perfectly balanced. There was a fist fight. As all things should be. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but now we got Black Panther. Yep. The other now thing. Now Billy's back. We want to talk about. We held off on the Black Panther talk because uh, we knew you specifically watched it to yes. partake in the conversation. Did Dylan, did you watch any like uh, spoilers or anything like yes, that? Yes, I did. did. You did. So you okay with us spoiling? Going yeah, full? I already know the spoilers. It's really not. I mean, is there really spoilers for this movie? I mean, if you just watch T'Challa, um, kind of. I mean, T'Challa had a kid with uh, Nakia. Yeah, yeah. Is Nokia? that really like? My, th- does that have an impact on the story, though? You know, like if you if you just saw the trailer, like you could pretty much judge what would happen. Other than they Shuri. can have another Black Panther named T'Challa. Yeah. <laughs> now? That's really, and I hope they get that kid. They just do a time skip time with that joke. kid. They 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 put him in a time machine. He looks exactly <laughs> like him. It's incredible. His 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 whole facial bone. So structure. how are they going to get that kid to the invent real actor? Time machine? <laughs> yeah, literally invent a time Marvel machine. Marvel will. They have the the budget. <laughs> Kevin Feige can do it. <laughs> Kevin Feige can do anything. So uh, okay, so the good, the bad, the ugly. Kyle, go. All right, so I'll open it up with a few things. That I um, I felt could have been different or maybe held it back a little bit. Uh, one, this didn't really affect me too much because I actually really liked the the direction they took the character, but I understand why it's causing a little bit of a, a ruckus within the community. They completely reworked uh, Namor's origin and whole history and everything. Um. And they, you know, they made him, it's difficult, but I mean, they made him a villain 
And so, like, there was just things they did with his character that people say didn't respect the source material. But and my it, initial gut reaction was kind of like, eh, I don't know, but um, I've I've grown, I've grown in this past <laughs> few days. No, I've I've uh, I've taken a second look and opinion on it, and it, it was handled and done extremely well. So I can forgive all of that very well, easily. Wasn't he always like an anti-hero in the comics too? Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, he, so the whole thing with him is um, he doesn't trust any of the land dwellers and he wants to conquer them all. Um, when you say it like that, it makes it sound like he's this um, genocidal bad guy. But I actually found myself rooting for him in a lot of the <laughs> situations um, just because they, they wrote him as a villain so well that I was like, to the point where I, in the final fight, I almost, a part of me wanted him to win <laughs> and then like be like, I changed my mind. I don't want to conquer the world <laughs> because I loved him so much. He was a really good villain. So that was that was one of the high highlights for me. Uh, they handled... Uh, Chadwick Boseman's death very respectfully. Um, they didn't shy away from it in the film. And didn't I call it? It was just a sickness. Yeah, it was very simple. It was a sickness. Unknown illness. Yep. Very, I mean, uh, very I'm, simple. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to say it was cancer. I mean... Well, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what happened in real life. I think they were... That's actually, what happened in real life. Yeah. That's probably what happened to him. That's as creative as they got. He specifically yeah. didn't tell He hid anyone. it from him, and then it got too bad where they couldn't help him. They couldn't help him. It like they basically made Not that he what happened that in, in real, real life. life. He probably told his well, doctors, and they told him. I heard so. he told uh, Kevin Feige or something. He told the director, I think, of, or he might have told Kevin Feige, but mm-hmm. he told... I think he... He like, told Ryan Coogler, the yeah, director. The director. Yeah. That, that, and that was it, as far as I understood it. Some other things I thought could have been done differently or better is um, Ironheart was kind of a, a pretty weak showing for me. I I didn't think um, I didn't think that she was she showed as good as she could have. Um, and, what, and it's not even on the actress; like it was just it was bad writing. It was it was bad writing for her. Um, and I also she's the only one that can build that machine, <laughs> and she's <laughs> yeah, also but... like an eighteen year old girl. It's like. Who did it as a science project? It's like I really? get that they're trying to make her a prodigy, but like you know, I don't know. Then build it up in a better way, just not like <laughs> they, surprise. It, it was such a throwaway yeah, thing. Yeah, no, totally. I also think that unfortunately, as much as I like him, um, I think that uh, Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> oh Mark Freeman, is <laughs> yeah, or something. I think that his character. Um, was kind of inconsequential. I, it may be because they're building up for other things, but who's they, that boss? Who's his boss lady? What's her name? Um, she was in Captain Right at the very uh, end, Falcon right? and Winter Soldier. Yeah, I forget her name. I think they didn't have to have the U.S. government. Why in that at all? They had no bearing totally other than agree. to be like, we need the fight. And then they <laughs> they made her look so dumb the whole time, and I'm like, okay, she's not dumb. Like, what's gonna happen then? You're arrested. We we bugged that that bracelet, and you're, <laughs> we're arresting you. It's like this is terrible. They right? could have like, easily focused on the you know, was it Telecon? Is it, I forget, uh, I'm, I, dude, good luck Talicon. on the names, man. They were, I was yeah. all over the place it, trying to. They could have focused on just this. that Wakanda, and the movie would have been unaltered in every way. It, I get what they're trying to do, like you know, Wakanda. They have to like now that T'Challa's dead. They were like trying to like stop people from like trying to invade them for the vibranium and stuff, um, but it it was it wasn't done poorly. It just I don't know if it was necessary. Um, what about Shuri? I really liked her actually in this. Um, I thought that she w- was much better in this film. That I liked her a lot more in this than I than I did in the first Black Panther. Um, I like how they showed her reacting to things in a very human realistic way. Like, you know, everyone she loves is like dying and she's not uh, she handling it. Her. She's not handling it um, like a superhero. She's handling it like a person, <laughs> you know, and she's maybe making mistakes because of it. Um, and she kind of finds herself 
in the end, but she starts becoming this like vengeful person. And of all people, it takes like M'Baku to be like, you know, maybe, (laughs) (laughs) which is funny because he's kind of come full circle as well. Um, The other thing that uh, I was going to touch on it before I got distracted when you asked me about it. No, it's not your fault. I'm I'm just super ADD. So it's. Do you remember? Uh, if you no. Don't, I Keep, gotta going. Know. Keep going. Uh, I also heard that Angela Bassett, the mom, was an amazing actress. Oh, Oscar winning. I think she was the she was hands down the best part of the film. Yeah, like that was Oscar winning level of acting. Like it was so good, especially when she's delivering that speech. The one from the trailer. Yeah. yeah. The have I not given everything? Yeah. And. Uh, her very much spoiler so. uh i've already talked about spoilers <laughs> yeah. but her death um affected me more than i thought it would because it caught me off guard i was like oh shit <laughs> like i didn't <laughs> think they were gonna do that um when looking back on hindsight it's like okay well yeah they needed some kind of motivation factor for shuri and and all that stuff um i also feel like they were like because namor was such a sympathetic villain that it almost was like they had to have him do something really bad to be like oh yeah right he's the bad guy (laughs) you know what i mean so my take on the whole thing um i really appreciated getting back to the serious nature of like marvel films like this was a very serious film they didn't have a lot of cheesy throwaway one-liners it was refreshing after thor love and thunder it was uh, certainly refreshing after that movie. Um, they also, I mean, I feel like half this film was dedicated to like the death of Chadwick. No, um, and it was they definitely was that the god of <laughs> <laughs> the god of war slam his hammer down. Uh, they definitely like did it did him justice in terms of the film. Like the whole Marvel intro scene was uh, like a moment of silence, which kind of was like a. It was a huge, like, kind of step back because you just don't hear anything and you see all, like, the photos of him playing Black Panther and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, they did the it's title crazy. card, but every, in the Marvel intro, mm-hmm. every single scene was, was a Black him. Panther scene. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I will say I like the original Black Panther better than this. Um, I actually have a different take than you, Kyle. I felt like I had the same take in the sense that I felt like you could side with Namor. Um, and it was interesting because I was like, these are basically the same types of cultures. They don't want outside influence. Like they, like they, they really want similar things. They, they don't want outside, you know, to deal with outside people. They kind of want to just be left alone and, you know, and, but now Wakanda is being asked to, to do more and more. And like, that's what he's basically asking for. But then I felt like they just wrote him. They could have played on that a lot more. And I felt like they didn't, I felt like they wrote him. To be just like really uninteresting, um, man. That is so not what I. Got I know, from and that. It, which is funny because when you were talking, he's about, my like, favorite part of the movie. Which is crazy because I, I really didn't feel like they had much character development. Like they told his backstory, but there wasn't like any development in the sense like he was like, "Hey, work with me, or I'll kill you." And it was like, oh, "Okay, well that was that's kind of in your face," and that was basically what they left it at. And he was like this super powerful dude who you know, led a nation of, you know, these aquatic based people. And, um, you know, and I was just like, man, I, f- I really wish they would have steered into that more because I wanted, like, I did find myself, especially early on before he just became like, you know, uh, psychopathic, uh, well, like, Hey, like you guys are fighting for like really the same values here. And, uh, <clears throat> so that was just, that was my take on that. I appreciate the serious nature. I thought, uh, what you what'd you call her? Bassett, Amanda, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. One of the best Marvel performances we've seen in a long time, and uh, the the child that comes on at the end of the movie was a, a literally a splitting image of him. I had to Google if it was actually his son because I was like, this is insane. Um, so we might see the return of you know, uh, like you've mentioned, a T'Challa. It's a long, uh, long game plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just time skip and twenty boom, years from now, well, you're gonna see another. They'll, find, they'll we'll find another dude that plays him that looks just yeah. like him. Uh, but I also felt like there 
there was some things that just didn't like this was a longer movie it was two hours and 41 minutes um the whole scene where she goes into what do they call that the uh, ancestral plane and she uh talks to killmonger yeah killmonger i felt like i was like oh what's gonna come and then it was nothing that was just like um well it was like a representation of where her mind was at she wanted vengeance that guy embodied vengeance yeah but it it also feels like because ryan coogler's like best friends with michael b jordan it also felt like another excuse like hey come back to my film (laughs) you know because he's in all of his films ryan coogler you kind of felt the same way it was just like uh like kind of weird i get what they were trying to do yes i get that in her mind she was clouded by wanting vengeance and he was the manifestation of that which is why he saw her or why she saw him i mean um but it also felt a little like remember me yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the fucking bad guy. You know? But now she also she did not so explain this to me at the end. So she didn't show up for the trial yeah. and to be the uh, the king of Wakanda, it right? It seems like Mbaku. She well, has whoever no desire. Him. Right. And so yeah. she wants to sort of so maybe the the killmonger will be like this like um now that he's like a part of her ancestral plane or whatever maybe he'll influence her more and in potentially films she or never something. really i mean yes she made a decision to spare him but she never really kind of stated like i'm not about that yeah, vengeance it was you just know? an active decision right and she so maybe that's how interestingly they that. her black panther outfit is actually killmongers it's not t'challa's mm. it's the gold she oh, embodied interesting the, it shows when they're because she's looking at all the mantles of people that have worn the black panther outfit and she looks at killmongers and she adopts his and so she's she's more of like a successor to killmonger than she is to t'challa what if they did that so that they can write her out <laughs> well <laughs> i don't would know be something well now but now here's the weird here's where it gets weird and this is probably my biggest complaint in the movie and this isn't actually maybe a, a critique of the movie, maybe just Marvel. Um, sh- so now she has the ability to just grow this plant whenever she wants, and uh, yeah. so she can she could literally make an army, or someone could abuse this and make an army of Black Panthers. But like, I'm kind of over super soldiers. No, I'm ki- well. <laughs> <laughs> That's I basically what Black Panther is. I am. I am kind of over the the magic powers of vibranium so i that's what i was gonna i remember now <laughs> that's what i was gonna it's say to, it's so taxing on me it's like oh we we have the i made these gauntlets that are made out of vibranium and it gives super durability super speed super strength and agility for anyone who wears it and it's like okay what the fuck are we talking that's um about? that's what i was gonna say actually before i remember now i i'm with you on that I feel like vibranium. It's just like when they don't know how to explain something. Yeah, they're just like default vibranium. <laughs> like it's a vibranium it suit. It's, it's like, a completely <laughs> vibration absorbent <laughs> metal. Therefore, I can do anything with it. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous, dude. And like she, because she was sure he was designing this like suit, or multiple suits throughout the film, and like it, it just kept like improving and evolving, and and then like her her like top generals ended up wearing it at the end and it like what it 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 made them fly or something or they could like but they had super durability super strength super like agility like reef and and i'm like what what, what's her name okoye okoye she um basically at the end she has an iron man suit made out of vibranium (laughs) and so (laughs) and it doesn't look that cool to be honest i was kind of disappointed in the design of that um so yeah i'm with you on that for sure i'm not with you on uh namor, namor. yeah i or i namor. think <laughs> namor is a soccer player <laughs> i think that um he was designed extremely well and he it wasn't like uh, if you don't join me i'll kill you like he was trying to show dominance but he actually was trying to avoid war and it was the wakandans that started it they killed his people first and he you know he cared a lot about his people and he went over and uh you know his generals were looking to him for like what do we do they just killed our people while we are treating them with respect like um so the wakandans were the one she was so afraid uh the queen she was so afraid of losing her other child that she wasn't thinking rationally and they 
she was totally fine. And they killed, uh, well, they're not Atlanteans anymore. They changed the lore. So, but they yeah, killed. Yeah, I, I know. I was waiting for that to drop. They like, killed, oh, um, killed two of them. And Namor, Namor had to, he had to represent his people. And so that he had to show force because he didn't want to risk, you know, going against what they were feeling at that moment. Mm-hmm. And he went in and he fucking wrecked for sure. But then he stopped and he said, you know, uh, Try to, mourn your people yeah, and then tell us what you think now, basically. Um, and then the Shuri's like, we're going to fucking kill him. <laughs> and, like, and so the whole time I felt like they were like, yes, he was doing things that weren't great. And ultimately, he was a villain. But that, those are some of the reasons why I felt like sympathetic yeah. for his cause. And I, I feel like I would have gotten more out of it if they would have just had maybe like a five or ten minute scene to show us a little bit more about the culture of this like great underwater civilization. Because well, like I we saw like, a little bit yeah, of it. They had it was like, man, show the... me a little bit more. Show me like kids playing and like they showed them <laughs> playing sports or something. Like, but get me invested in their like, play. The like if you've ever seen like El Dorado. They're playing that hoop game. Yeah, the, the hip soccer. They're playing that underwater. Oh, <laughs> and the and like his people, they were like, they were all like it was artistic, and they all seemed happy. Yeah, they genuinely like liked Shuri being there and stuff. And so when you know the queen was like, "Save my daughter at any cost," and they go and kill those two <laughs> people, it's like, hold on, <laughs> you know, it didn't have to be like that, dude. And let's just talk about like uh, sh- uh, when they blatantly fucking murdered the police officers on the bridge did you see that they like blew them up in a fiery rage and like we're like yeah and i was like ironheart did (laughs) the police were like blockading Blockading. and ironheart went in and fucking nuked them (laughs) and i was like wait a minute you just killed fucking police officers i'm like Let's just, like, what is this? Who are the bad guys? That, <laughs> exactly. Guys? And so that's why I kept wanting to flip, but I just, I didn't have enough from that, the character <sighs> in the civilization to really get me to play that, yeah. that coin. But, yeah. Anyway. And then, um, yeah. And then at the end, I felt a little dissatisfied with the outcome. I like that he got spared because that means he's going to be, like, in further installments. And then he even told his, his, like, you know, his, I don't know, was it his wife? <laughs> he told her, like, um, I'm playing, like, the long con. Like, yeah. obviously, we're stronger with them. I do this now so that we can have them later kind of thing. So it was all part of his, quote, unquote, plan. So he's going to be back. Um, but I loved, I also loved his origin where, like, you know, the conquistadors came over and were pillaging and doing all that terrible stuff and... They like prayed to the the gods and they were ate that special root that yep. made them, and then he basically became the manifestation he, of that one god because he was born uh, under the prayer, and that's why he can live in both water and land without problems and fly and, and fly and basically Superman like Thor levels of power. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with the around. coolest grenades ever, the yeah. water grenades. How does uh, winged feet look? Honestly, I thought it'd be silly, but it it was kind of cool. The way they did it was actually kind of majestic. Like yeah. he he could like it was like almost like he had a platformer in there where he was like kind of stepping on things. And he was <laughs> not so much flying as he was like roller skating yeah. through the air, That's and it was really it. cool looking. Huh. Yeah, it wasn't like yeah, it wasn't like he just floated like Superman <laughs> or whatever. But it was like it was like a balancing act, like the whole bursts, time. like a hummingbird burst, like. <laughs> So I loved when he, they finally came back to their village and like they saw all their like former like family like in slavery, and then like he starts flying like as a little kid yes. and like that one priest is like ah Diablo and, like <laughs> freaking out like I just love how epic it was when he's taking revenge because he's pissed that they're killing his people. But he's like eight. Yeah. yeah, he's like eight years old and he's like flying and it just <laughs> they all look like holy shit what the fuck. Yeah, they definitely put like in terms of like war capability, like they put Wakanda to shame. Like, yeah, they they could walk over. The them. funny thing about that is, even though Namor like yielded, he's like, "All right, I yield." They actually won that fight. 
Yes. <laughs> the They were actually smoking the Wakandans and they had them completely backed up and then Namor was like, yield, like stop. <laughs> like it made them stop, but they were going to win that fight. So that was that was interesting to see as well. So I did, I wanted to ask about, what about the the mutant name drop? What? When he said, I'm a mutant? Yeah. Was oh. that hype at all? No. Uh, no, they've already they've already teased X Men. Yeah, true. With Xavier. Yeah, yeah but- I mean, it was. I maybe I would have been more hyped about it five years ago, <laughs> you know. But they've already done a bunch of mutant drops, Teasers, like yeah. with Wanda. They did a mutant type thing, and Deadpool with Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I mean, and then um, where is Vision? <laughs> yeah, who knows? He contemplating life. I miss him. He's listening to Linkin Park right now. I will, I like hope he's on like season two of Loki. <laughs> Vision. Fuck it. I don't know. I just Fuck. love that actor, Paul Bettany. Uh, we got twenty minutes here left. I, like I want to get into uh, The Witcher. Vision. Oh God. Yes. So, um, for those unaware, they recast. So real quick, we never even said. Oh. Do we recommend that movie oh. or not? Uh, if you're a Marvel fan, go see it. If you, uh, I think you might like it better if you're not a Marvel fan. Everyone I know that isn't a fan of Marvel likes this movie huh. because they're not, they have no preconceived notions of what that's supposed to be. To me, I feel like if you don't know what Marvel is, then like the first forty minutes might be really dry because it's just them like really upset over the death of Chadwick. So yeah, and you I mean, don't everyone really knows he died. Yeah. But like, if you, I felt like if you're on the outside and didn't experience like him and Black Panther and all the Avengers films, like you might be like, "All right, get to the point." But I'll give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, I'd do a seven out of ten. Eight. I don't know what I gave. I don't 10. know what I gave Thor: Love and Thunder, but I know I liked it more than that. <laughs> I think you gave it like a seven. If I gave Thor: Love and Thunder a seven, then I'd give this like an eight point five. I've been meaning to go back and listen to it because I think I'll, we gave it a very neutral rating. But we've all soured on it since, which is interesting. I think that's one of those things that the more you have time to digest something and the more you have time to think about it on the greater whole, it might change your opinion. Or is it us being influenced by the outside world? That too. Could be that too. Yeah. Like we read enough opinions, you go, oh, that's a I good don't know point. If it's oh, that's so a good much point. Like, and then you just go. It's so, I don't know if it's so much like, oh my God. Um, like they're warping my opinion because they don't like it, or as you said, like it's more of like a, you know, that is a good point. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that is a good point. I didn't like that either, <laughs> and I didn't think about it too much until that person said yeah, it, yeah. and then I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I didn't like that either. <laughs> so I don't know. I still, overall, as a Marvel fan, I still liked it, um, but I do think that this this one was leaps and bounds better. Um, and a step in the right direction is tone wise. Yeah, as well. I would agree with that. And and it was, it was a good film in the sense like it, it didn't it didn't blow my mind in terms of storytelling. Like again, we I think we talked about it. Like if you watch the trailer, you could pretty much guess what was going to happen. Yeah. And 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 that's what the outcome was. And and so it didn't like blow me away from story. It didn't blow me away from visuals. It was. It was what you would expect. They and didn't I think that that's why. I will yeah. say I will say that there was no CGI that took me out of it. Correct. Which like the first Black Panther? Yeah, like first Black Panther movies. or the last few Marvel films. There's oh, the last few Marvel like, films what? there's been some pretty gross CGI. This time around, I don't think there was anything that caught me off guard. It all looked pretty good. Which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> but so, yeah. um Namor basically was like a softer, nicer, not, I mean, he's still very powerful and commanding, but he was a less intense version of Killmonger. <laughs> they had very similar goals. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That is true. They both wanted to conquer the outside world yeah. and protect their people. They wanted to attack before they were attacked. Okay. Anyways, Dylan, Witcher. Yes. So, um, they Couple have, things on it, Witcher. Yeah. yeah. They have recast Henry Cavill with Liam Hemsworth. And, but, so this will be for season five. Season four is still going to have Henry, and that's going to come out sometime soon. Season three will still have Henry. Season three. Season, and then season four, four is, is going to have Liam. So, oh, okay. 
Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I absolutely hate it. Nothing against Liam. I'm, you know, I. It's not his fault. I don't like what that potentially means because we all know that Henry Cavill has said that he'll be in, involved with it as long as he feels the source material is worthy of the character. And he said that like a week before he was like, okay, I'm gone. Yeah. So that makes me nervous about what it's going to turn into. And I mean, there's all the rumors flying around um, about how reportedly the head writer of the show or multiple writers said that they hated the books and the games. Well, hell of an IP to buy then if you hate the source right? material. To write for. It's like, <laughs> what the? And so like so much of, from what I've seen, you know, online, so much of what made the previous seasons good was Henry's input. And so I'm scared. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch it. Um, I feel like so I'm not I'm one of the I fall on the side that like if you you don't have to sit there and follow the the source no. material, you know, word for word. I, I've Look always loved Marvel. like yeah, adapt it to it to the new medium and have some freedoms there. That's fine. I don't I don't know if Liam Hemsworth can play Geralt. Um, just the stoicism that is required to do that. Uh, it'll be interesting. Also, the voice. I, I don't know if I've ever heard him do voice acting work. Um, because like Henry Cavill uh, or Cavill or whatever, um, played Superman, which is a very specific tone. Like, there's actually like there is some transformation versus Liam Hemsworth has played a lot of just really basic Hunger broy games. roles. <laughs> um, he was in Star Trek Into Darkness, which I didn't even know. He's the his dad, Captain Kirk's dad. Um, no, that was Chris first. Hemsworth. Oh, I'm Thor. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Liam Hemsworth, the brother, the, the brother, the younger brother. But I haven't seen anything where he's like, you know, had to be like forced to rework his voice or anything. So I think it's an interesting challenge, and I'm, I expect a decent performance from there. So I think it's going to be interesting to see. The problem is. The Witcher season two was not that. Season one was not that good. Mm -mm. Season two wasn't that good. I'll probably just keep watching it because it's The Witcher, but like it, just cancel it. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't I know. know. Or like relaunch it or something. I don't know. Season one, w w in my opinion, was good, um, but season two really fell off for me. Season one was almost impossible, even as a fan, to follow. Yeah, that's true. The it was, amount of skips around. You had to around. look up. You like, had to fucking time skips to I research. I had to do that. It was. And good. I played all the game. Like it's like it's insane. Yeah, it was. It was tough. I don't know how an average fan could could follow. Yeah, I mean, they I could follow because there's a lot of shirtless Henry Cavill. Yes, that's where a lot. You're of absolutely their, right. <laughs> that's <laughs> where a lot of it came from. <laughs> Now, him leaving could also be just due to him getting Superman back. We don't, we didn't, we haven't got confirmation, but I feel like it's I mean, he didn't agree with the a, writers. I guarantee yeah. he signed a thing to where he can't talk about it. Yeah, so we'd never know for sure. What What do you mean? Like, are they relaunching like a Superman? Movie he signed or? on for more picture films. Oh, okay, he, they came to an agreement. Yeah, so he's he's going to be fully oh, back. We didn't even. I mean, we got to mention. We'll, we'll finish talking about Witcher, but um, James Gunn. Yep, going yeah. to DC. Yeah. We've been gone for two weeks. There's a lot we That's missed. That's a huge deal. But yeah, I... I Nothing against Liam Hemsworth. I'm more mad at the creative team. Um, and after season three, I'm not going to watch it. There was an argument made that Henry Cavill was always too pretty to play Geralt anyways. But... Um, and they say that Liam Hemsworth, I guess, is actually potentially more book accurate, but I think it's all in the portrayal, really. And didn't, Henry Cavill had an amazing portrayal. Didn't the book author say that like Henry Cavill did a perfect performance? I don't give a shit what the book author says, <laughs> and that sounds terrible as a fan, but he he has been the worst. It's like true. he shits on anybody that likes the games. He's like, it's not true. And then he completely sells out his soul to the studio, which didn't respect his property nearly as much as CD Projekt Red did. And he's just mad because he sold the rights, even though they offered him a royalty deal. He specifically said, I don't believe in video games as a medium. You'll never make money. 
<laughs> and then he got mad that he sold the rights of Witcher for like eight grand. And then he tried <laughs> to, to sue CD him, right? Project Red. And then he sued them because he wants more money now that you know Witcher three made however much it made. <laughs> like, like I'll play devil's advocate here. That maybe if 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 the if the directors of this show truly you know like you said Dylan are spitting on the source material, then having Henry there was probably a big thorn in their side. Because he would want to keep pulling it back to that. And then they're like, hey, you're not sticking in line with our creative vision. And so maybe that maybe that came through on the screen where it was like not, you know, the, a lot of the fighting, a lot of things were added because Henry wanted it there. And maybe that's what made the show not as great as it might be. So maybe having Liam in there now makes it, you know, puts it in a spot where it can be good. I don't know. So that would be me playing devil's advocate, but dude, you're like, like the whole show is around him. Like just cancel it and start yeah. something new or like call it something different. Like, you know, the, the, the findings of Geralt or so, you know, like just call it something new and, and relaunch it. I don't understand why we're just going to continue down like this series. Everybody That's else already is going to be the same. And all of a sudden Geralt's going to look different. Yeah. And like, it's already, it's yeah, not like, like this Doctor is Doctor who thing. Where <laughs> yeah. He dies and comes back, <laughs> <laughs> but He's it's not, not like it's, it, it's not like this series is held in extremely high regard. And like people are waiting for it to come back. No, no, like it's, it, it's sort yeah, of in shambles. To clarify the Netflix series of Witcher. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Not the games. Or the sort books. Or the well, the books might be in shambles. Geralt goes away and he's replaced by his cousin Gerald. <laughs> Gerald of Rivia. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like Blue's Clues when Steve left. Or maybe he dies and like yeah, is consumed by this ghost of Liam. He's like Oh, they'll probably and then, you know what that just makes too much sense, right? Is yeah. he like a good It's a vampire series about Geralt? 10 years younger than Henry Cavill, too? I mm, No. How, how old is Henry? Henry Cavill? He's not like 45, is I he? I want to say he was born in the 70s, man. I could be wrong, but... He's 39, so 83. 83, okay. So he's younger than I thought. <laughs> but Liam Hemsworth was born in 90? Nin- yeah, he's 32. I guess that's not that big of a difference. Yeah. Look up Liam's Hem- Liam Hemsworth the Witcher and you'll see like fan art of him. People and- are already making fan art? Yeah. Of course they are. What am I thinking? Fan art exists Geralt. for everything. Let's see. And then images. Let's see. Oh, there he is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just Henry Cavill. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying he's not going to pull it off from, you know, just a physique. Yeah, nothing but. against him. My my issue isn't with Liam Hem- Hemsworth. It's with I honestly I feel decision. bad that I've we've never seen Liam Hemsworth in a role where he's actually really taken off, required to act. Um yeah. the and that, that I might have just offended somebody out there cuz he probably has done something that was worthy, <laughs> but like all the shit that's come out about his castmates like his castmates are are saying like Henry on set has been like the the encyclopedia about this stuff like he knows yeah. exactly he's like hey I was just reading something about like a uh, uh like yeah the person I, who plays Siri she's like you should say this line from page two hundred and fifty three of like the first like he's a huge nerd about these books so like. Again, maybe that's a bad thing to have on set because you're constantly contradicting the writer and the director, and maybe they have a vision and he didn't want to go along with it. True, but, but also when the biggest nerd about it leaves, that's <laughs> that's kind of a bad sign. <laughs> and yeah. man, this picture—it's only a bad sign though. But if it's if if they want to keep to the net, at, we're laughing. We're at laughing. If you go to a, Google, a very funny look, looking Liam fan art. Hemsworth. <laughs> witch are up and it's like the fifth photo and oh man it's a horrible photoshop <laughs> it's better than what i could do at least <laughs> but uh, it still looks better than i would as Gerald, yeah. but i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it goes i'm okay with henry cavill leaving it and just moving back to superman he was born to play that role 
He does. I want so him to well. do. He he's too talented and too built to not have like an amazing role. You know. And now that in DC, now guns, that James, the yeah. Kevin Feige of the it's DC, going to be interesting. I'll 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 be interested to see where he goes with Superman. Yeah. You know, and the future. Oh, this is is this the official season four? <laughs> no, it's no. fan art. Oh, oh well. Even there, he looks too like if people say Henry Cavill was too pretty, that looks too pretty. Liam Hemsworth is a very pretty man. Yeah, so <laughs> mm. I'm thinking like uh, someone they have in mind, more like uh, I guess like Vigo Mortensen, uh, like Aragon. that would probably work. Like kind of rough. What about Mads rough. Mikkelsen? Mads Mikkelsen. People really wanted him. <laughs> <laughs> they talked about it. Talked about that a lot before it ended up going to Henry Cavill. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. It's just like oh, a really Arnold edgy Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Conan the Barbarian. Come on, man. Sylvester Stallone. Bring the old OG crew back. Yeah, whatever Sorry. happened. Remember when uh, <laughs> Henry Cavill was reading a Mass Effect script? Whatever happened yeah. to that? That's never going to go anywhere. <laughs> it's a bummer. What could have been? What could have been? You got to think of like how many times these... I wonder how many things get pitched, and it's like we're only going to do this if you agree to do it, and you don't agree to do it, and then they don't go through with it. I wonder. It's how weird many that he that posted happens. it though. And yeah, he was like reading something very interesting or whatever he said, and uh, the only thing they're able to unscramble was Tally Zora and Reapers, right? And Reapers. Yeah. Well, I feel like Henry could do like I feel like he could do voice work. He could do Shepard. Totally agree. Yeah. So like maybe maybe there is something in the background where he's just doing voice work, but I think he has a good enough voice. Honestly, if Henry what Cavill... What if he's in the new game? <gasps> maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is, because the game's it. still in development. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. If Henry Cavill... If he can you he's already a god amongst nerds. <laughs> can you he imagine... Can you imagine if he got cast as Commander Shepard? Like... We, Everybody die. <laughs> like everybody would die. <laughs> it's a cult. <laughs> we all drink the Kool Aid and. <laughs> but maybe hey, nice maybe butt. that's what it is. Maybe he voices a character in the uh, in the new Mass Effect, like James. You know, was Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> Please don't relegate him to James. <laughs> what? God. No. If Henry Cavill, saying he would. If you Henry Cavill is a voice actor, I want him to be the main character. He needs to be Garrus or the main character. Garrus. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a live action Mass Effect and Henry Cavill plays Garrus, <laughs> just fucking jacked, completely mad, like prosthetic up the whole time total waste of him <laughs> like being there just you need him for movement acts <laughs> he plays Edie. <laughs> like a, this guy can joker. play anything <laughs> he plays joker <laughs> he plays a cripple he played lesions <laughs> oh god <laughs> they put his face on a skinny body like with Chris, Captain America. Chris Hemsworth <laughs> <laughs> except <laughs> he never has a glow up yeah. <laughs> he plays jack it's yeah. <laughs> like some bdsm still like, a woman here. jack though but it's henry cavill just, <laughs> just jacked out of his mind what if henry cavill played every character i want to see I, it i would want to see it i just i think he's so talented and he's such a cool dude i just want to support anything he does i'm glad he got superman back well, is that confirmed though? Yes. Oh, it's yeah. oh, it's confirmed. One hundred percent confirmed. Yeah. Black Adam, he's in it. Oh, I didn't know that. And they and then <clears> then he James actually Gunn. Talked about I never it. saw Black Adam. Did James Gunn say they were making the movie? I think James Henry Gunn Cavill. talked about Henry Cavill being back in it. Yeah. Okay. And then Henry, he sent a post out saying like, "Can't wait to see the future of what I'm going to be doing with Superman. I'm going to be." He said he's going to be more hopeful and more horny. Not horny, but more like happy Superman. I don't want to mm. see what I don't want is Superman in a you know Guardians of the Galaxy Suicide Squad type movie. I do want to see a lighter Superman. I was I didn't like Man of Steel was good, but the whole Zack Snyder like Superman is Jesus. I but the problem like with having Superman in anything is it's fucking Superman. 
the strongest superhero of all time. Like you can't have him in like a suit. Could you imagine him in Suicide Squad? Like all these people are struggling and he's just walking through, <laughs> yeah, like, like fucking everything up. Like there's that's no why, risk. There's well, Superman, that's why Black Superman's Adam. villains. Black Adam is not as strong as Superman. He's magic though. Superman's weak against magic. He's not. I mean, in, if but he's look, only weak against if Kryptonite, you look right? through all of like they have that whole movie. The movie is not a good representation of Black Adam in the comics. He's not on Superman's level. Rock wants it to happen, though. He wants it to happen, but <laughs> Rock is going to be pretty sad to learn <laughs> that Black Adam gets his ass handed to him by Superman. The Rock is tr- like trying to be the boss of DC, okay? <laughs> Fucking what the if Rock. the Rock just got like really, really fat? <laughs> he stopped working like, just out stopped one day. just stopped working out. Like, <laughs> how big... long can he... Say? That dude's been that jacked for like decades, man. Have you seen his like cheat days? Dude, he eats more than I do in a month <laughs> in one day. What a savage. It's insane. Anyway. I love that. I do muscles. like that. Vid- There's this like, sh- he up. He was like doing Instagram live and somebody asked him, they're like, uh, what happens if uh, anyone like you, he was like eating a bunch of food and he's like, what happens if you eat like that and don't work out? And he was like, you get fat. <laughs> like, and he laughs hard. And then he laughs yeah. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, where can people find us? They can find us on YouTube, any podcast listening platform where you're listening to us right now, as well as Ooh. Instagram and Twitter, where we'll post regular updates, memes, and just funny live stuff. Live stream on YouTube? Yes, That's live stream on YouTube. Yeah. Go check it out. We just did one about the Game Awards. And how important those are, and how much I listen to them <laughs> and, and, pl- and play those games. Billy, you know, he was absolutely elated and super happy about the choice we came to with Game of the Year. He loved to specifically how we chose Game yeah, of the Year. The yeah, most. specifically yeah. how. I think the methodology in which we selected Game of the Year was incredibly thought provoking and thoughtful. And I just appreciate you guys both for taking a very we, uh, scientific approach with me. In evaluating our feelings and our opinions <laughs> to culminate into a, an effective decision, I appreciate you guys. It's not like we flipped a coin or anything, so I appreciate. We, I can say you with a hundred percent certainty, we did not flip a coin. We did not, and we would never. Flip and that's a why coin. I appreciated yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, remember, with a good KD, you get the dub. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.